years. I used it a little bit. And, uh, so, maybe this will tell, it'll, it'll answer my question. I, I, maybe, I mean. Yeah, I got that all hooked up. Nope. I think it might, I think, I was, like I said, I was able to get from, Two pins to beep, two pins to beep on the continuity tester, and then the center one, if I touched it to the ground, it would beep, I believe, yeah. I don't think this switch is actually bad. Let's see if it's getting any power. Now, yeah. where's my multimeter? I got, uh, I did get uh, five volts on one particular combination there. Yeah, I remember now what it was. I may have to have more. Yeah, I have to have something where I can see those things. This, I can see them if I turn on the light and look through that. Okay. There's actually some test uh, spots on there, and I can't remember which one was the ground now. Uh, I can see it on that one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's the ground. So, oh yeah. And it's the one right beside it. It is the. It's not giving me any voltage there. Well, I'm not on the right one. I'm afraid I'm going to short something out here. I still can't see that good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Oh, I don't think I was touching the place where I could get a connection anyway. Yeah, five volts. I just I just now saw some plastic over part of it. Five point zero three volts steady. Yeah. And the top of the, I thought the top of the, uh, let's test all these little test points now. Okay, I'll go from ground. Now let's go to the next one. Now, just uh, hunting in the millivolts. That's one thing that's really crappy about, I don't like about digital multimeters. Uh, you didn't get all this craziness going. It wasn't so slow. An old analog multi, uh, multimeter, my old Radio Shack, would... Uh, only thing wrong with the wires are broken. I need to make up some new wires for it. And the screw for setting the zero was lost. It fell out. But it's not too far off. And I can't see it anymore, but uh, it it, it uh, even if you can't see it, it's not hunting. You know whether you have a voltage or not. It's going to go to one volt or twelve volts, or that's, it won't, I think it goes much over twelve volts. But and I've got an old uh, car tester, generator tester that'll go up to like forty or sixty volts. But it was wires were all messed up. I'd kind of redo it. I think I got it to where everything works but one set of wires somewhere they're shorted where I didn't realize it. One, two, three, four. And they, uh, you really got to be careful with that. Okay, so. I don't remember how I. Okay, there's that one all by itself. I can't really. I tried this before. I can't hold the button down and, uh. Do, you know, I can hold the two leads to do any real testing of the switch. I tried and tried. Just couldn't get a way, figure a way to do it. But I did figure out. Go ahead and. Now let's just 
Even though I unplug it, there'll still be some power in the caps for a while. So let's just turn it, unplug it before I try doing that again. Yeah, it's really not a lot of sense in doing that. Okay, so I mean I can't say 100% that the power's that uh, either way, you know. I mean I don't know that the power supply is bad just because that don't work because I can't. I've never used that uh, adapter. I'd have to try it on something and have it work before I'd know that it works, you know. And uh, power supply well, could be just bad. It, it may and, and it may not. It could have went bad because they were running it without all the pins. It might have been straining it, not, uh, or it could have blown out the motherboard because they were trying to run it without all the pins. <clears throat> I do with the this was I do remember one thing I know about it and that's why I thought oh, it's probably just somebody got mad at the switch and broke it it is uh, the reason I thought that is because they he told me it's a hotel where my friend works and he told me they gave it to me he said uh, it was the computer that they let the guests use in like a little room, you know, computer room or lounge room or whatever. Then that clip clips. It's like, it's like I was saying before, some of them you can't get them off to save your life. You got to watch out when you use pliers. Pliers have a cutter right there, and those pliers love to get in that cutter. I think I already nicked a couple. Let me try the needle nose. They usually don't work too good for that, but it's better than... They have a cutter too, but they're not as likely to get that if you pay attention. You really ought to set those cables way down so that you can't get a hold of it too easy. I mean, they will get in it with the needle nose. But I don't know why it's hanging on like that. Ah, oh, there we go. It wasn't clipped anymore. It just needed a little tug in the other direction. And this one, if it'll come off of here, will be fine. Oh, that's what I hate about working in these metal computer boxes. They, every, everything jerks when you try to unplug it. First it won't come out, and then all of a sudden you just poof. And everything is sharp. I always thought they were better than anything made out of plastic. But these newer ones, everything is sharp on them. And they're thin. It's nice that they're not as heavy, but... Yeah, the only way I'm going to know is if, uh, and I, I was going to look because I kind of thought maybe I have one power supply that uh, I think I'm sure I have one. I didn't, I know I didn't do anything with it. It was a power supply out of a machine. Uh, I can't remember which machine it was. That I f it was working, but it was in bad shape, and I didn't know it for a long time. I thought it was the operating Windows 7 operating system. It was, uh, what's that thing? Anyway, it was a machine, uh, it's out in the garage now. I think I took everything out of it. The box is still out there. But, uh, it, uh, oh, maybe I had that AS Rock, I had that AS Rock motherboard in it for a long time. And but and it was running. It was never real fast. It was always kind of sluggish. No, it was just because it was a crap processor. Because it was a really low. The lower end AMD is what it was. But uh, when I finally realized that the, I knew it was a very low powered process uh, power supply. But I didn't. Uh, but that was the processor that came with it. So I figured it'd probably be all right. But it. Wasn't all that all right because it wore out prematurely. It wasn't that old of a machine. It was e machines. That's what it was. And of course, they were famous for failing. And uh, bad cap syndrome. I think they're the ones that invented it. But uh, bad cap syndrome was, if you never heard of it, was uh, capacitors. Made very poorly, and they would just go out, blow out, swell up, just let pop like a like a like a cap, you know, uh, like a, like a firecracker. 
And uh, yeah, that motherboard had, oh, about five or eight bad caps in it. And for my neighbor, it was my neighbor's machine. And I, she was, she was, uh, I ended up, she was kind of, she decided she'd just rather buy another one. And I kind of, I was helping her. And, and uh, you know, they're pretty expensive. Desktops, you know, were then and are now. And I said, well, I could build you one for about a whole lot less than that. For, I used to buy the kits at Parts Express and put them together. I haven't done it a whole lot. Uh, my first machine I ever built was that, and still under there, it still works. Uh, and anyway, I built her one, a six core. It was about a year or so before I rebuilt Mom's. The thing with Mom's is she still hasn't been able to use it because I, I ended. I, I was telling you how I didn't in the previous video. I think how I didn't like that the, with the AS, ASRock motherboard's fine, great, but with the 8300 processor, which to be fair is not listed to even work in that. It that motherboard was made several years before that processor was made. You know, was came out, uh, but it does run. But the uh, I couldn't get the Ethernet to work and it had gigabit Ethernet. I didn't say that a little though. And uh, I had to put a hundred, a uh, hundred mega, uh, giga, megabit, hundred megabit Ethernet card in it to get, it, you know, connection. And uh, we got a two hundred megabits internet, so I just that just just torqued me, you know. I just couldn't stand that, so I uh, I decided I went and bought. A, I've got it sitting over there, AS Rock. No, I mean a, a Zeus motherboard that is, you know. I researched and made sure I got one that would work with that processor. It's an easy machine to get apart and work on. And uh, and I have not got it built for yet, re rebuilt. I had it all just about ready to go. I had the operating system on it and everything. And it, it's got some, you know, I, look, I use it about once every week and a half or so to uh, put groceries in the cart. We order groceries and go get them, you know. Wally wore them, and uh, that's all the use it's been getting. And I just always, whenever I do feel good enough to do work on something, it turns into be something like this, and it turns into a major deal instead of a quick hour-long, two-hour-long thing. You know, I've been doing this since four about five, four thirty-five this morning, and it is now sometime. I can't find a clock. Oh, they're over there. It's now 10.35 a.m. And I got up at about 2 yesterday afternoon. And I wanted to do this. Yeah, this little switch, it, it's it got plastic. It's kind of funny. It's One side was like held tight, and it broke. And the other side is plastic in like an S shape. And it was the spring. I could tell that. And, uh, yeah, it still doesn't work. But it was somebody got mad at it and shoved it in real hard and it was stuck. And I thought, well, I bet if I get that loose, uh, I figured it was just jammed too far because I was thinking of how all the other ones I've seen look, you know. And I never expected to find a circuit board on the power switch. So uh, I, I really suspect. I mean, I could take this power supply out and put it in some other machine that I know works and see if it's any good, but I'm not going to do that now. I was just thinking this would be the... It's a nice-looking box, and it's the newest one of the ones I've got out there in the garage, I think. It's not, it looks newer. And I thought, I was saying earlier, I was gonna, I'm going to put... Uh, I wanted to get it done today so I could get this TV you know, out of this, it's in kind of a, if I bump into it real hard over there getting in and out of bed, I'll knock it over. I kind of was having, plus I hurt my knees on the, that tray getting out of bed. See, it slides in. I don't leave it out at night. I didn't hit it last night, but I'll leave it there very long. Off. I will definitely run into it. But I want to put, I'm going to try it up high because the way I lean way back on my chair, that actually makes me look straight at it. And leave this one right where it is, the little one right where it is. As little as it used to be big, it's 23 inch. But anyway, I'm going to set the legs on top of two computers. There's one already over there, and I'm going to clean that out and put one over there and get that laptop out of there and put it somewhere else. And and this was, I thought, that's one I could put in there and just leave it there. Because once I get it in there, you know, I don't really want to have to dig it out. Like Mom's, Mom's box is exactly the same box as mine that's over there. 
same height, same width, everything. It would be perfect. But I thought, well, I'm going to stick it in there because that will deter me getting it out and working on it, you know. And I still don't think I will. I, my my uh, Blue FIC is what I call it. It was, uh, it was made by First International Computer. And it is good. There's no bad caps in it. Uh, they called it an American-made, you know, system. But it was, you know, I mean, they didn't make the electronics, really, make any of it, I don't think. Maybe some of it. They got the parts from, well, at least I think they got them from Japan, not from China. There was one thing that wasn't good about it. The way they soldered the uh, CMOS battery, the BIOS battery in there, it was in the way of the, uh, getting the hard drives in and out. And I was always taking hard drives in and out and adding them and taking stuff out. And I would put them in there to work, do work on them or back them up or something and then take them back out again. And uh, you'd always end up on that. You know, there's, it has like four or five trays in there, but I, uh, maybe not that many. Yeah, it's got one, two, three, four. Well, four and then two uh, floppy trays. And uh, anyway, there was, I think there might have been two trays that, that uh, it was in the, right in the middle of in the way. It was sticking out. You know, most usually the... Uh, the batteries will be laying down like that on the board. Well, this one was sticking up like that. And after, over the years, it uh, it just kept getting knocked. And uh, it just came loose. And uh, the solder came loose. And it's not, I thought, well, I could just solder it back. But um, it still runs just fine. It's just that if you unplug it, it loses its BIOS settings. And you've got to go through BIOS. When you boot it up, it'll stop and say you have to set it up. Lost setup. So that's a pain, especially if your power goes out, and you, you know, even though it's still plugged in. I don't use it hardly ever, um, but I've got some things that I want to be able to hook up. Like it's got a serial ports, and I don't know what. It's got several things on there that their computers don't have, and so I really want to. It used to have Windows XP on it. Now it's got Fedora 20 to one, 19 or 21 or something. It doesn't run it very well because it's a Pentium 4. Let's see, what is it? Pentium 4, uh, 2 point something gigahertz. I think it's like 2.1 or 2 or something. It was really, at the time, is the fastest machine, one of the fastest, you know, machines you could get. And, uh, and I, oh, I spent $650, you know, buying, buying the kit and putting it together. And there was all these rebates that I never did. It was supposed to cost like $450, but I, I never get that. I shouldn't have known I wouldn't get it done. But, uh, and then there was one other thing that did happen. The way they attached the CPU cooler, the K, the, the mount for the CPU cooler to the motherboard, that came loose. And I just, I looked at it and I thought, you know, that's not going to be too easy to fix. And I realized, well, it's completely away from any of the solder traces or anything. And so I got me a paper clip and straightened it out, stuck it through the holes and then twisted it like a twist tie. Never moved again. <laughs> uh, and it wouldn't matter if it touched the case. I think I made sure it didn't touch the case, but it wouldn't even matter if it did. It wasn't touching anything electrical, you know, any any circuits. So, uh, yeah, this little machine is kind of, I, I just kind of like the looks of it. I used to just thought Lenovo was complete junk uh, when, when they first, and I was mad because they bought, when I found out they bought out IBM, because they're a Chinese company, you know. But uh, that one I've got has really been good. And, and I started learning when I was... Morton, I said that earlier and didn't finish. Uh, Morton, uh, my Playhouse channel. If, you, if you're if you into servers, watch his channel. Man, that, dude, that's what he does for a living. And he has, you know, a server's uh, room in his house because he loves to mess with it so much. And he also... Li I like his project. He likes to do solar and... He's got solar, he's got uh, solar water heating, he's got solar electricity, you know, PV panels, as they call them, and uh, he's just always doing stuff like that. So, um, it is over in Denmark, I believe it is, so things, if you're American, it's to me it's really interesting, you know, like, they have, uh, like, when their heat pumps, you know, here in America, heat pumps are air conditioners that, uh, that you just turn around and blow the the heat out of the you know the exhaust side to make heat <laughs> blow it into the house to make heat and it doesn't you know completely heat the house it, it, like it'll, it'll heat the house down to about 40 degrees and under that you've got to have 
supplemental system. They're usually electric, but his heat pump, he, he's adding another one just, just this last month or two, and they run water through them and they're only heat. They don't have air conditioning. <laughs> I never heard of such a thing, you know. It's really interesting. I mean, I knew there was things like that. Uh, for instance, he had the one, the, he has a, a, I never would have heard it, called it a heat pump. He has a, well, people always call them solar water heaters. They, they do them to heat water for their showers and they do it to, uh, so if they build a big, if you build a big enough one, you got a lot of sun where you live. He doesn't have a lot of sun. He has a lot of rain and a lot of cold weather. But in the summer, he he gets enough uh, heat out into that water to. Uh, what does he do? Oh, he uses, he uses, he runs it through radiators in his house. So he uses it to supplement his heat heating system in his house. They, it's really gets cold there, and it, and it's more cold weather than it is summer weather there, and it rains a lot. And uh, anyway. He just he just a fun guy to watch. He's really smart. Uh he really knows those servers. Uh I, I've been interested I started getting interested. I wanted to I thought, I noticed back in the early two thousands that you could get ser old servers that are just really maybe five, eight, five or ten years old. Like ten year old servers, that's what the one I got is. Uh three hundred bucks. Two uh six core processors, uh sixty four uh, sixty four gig of RAM. For 300, 300 bucks, that's with like thirty, forty dollars shipping. They kind of go back and forth. Sometimes they'll say three hundred bucks and free shipping, you know, and do stuff like that. But uh, anyway, uh, and of course these machines are made. They're built like a tank. They last forever. And the, and actually the parts are still available. They're not really all that expensive. Most of them for this machine. Uh, the well, when I first started looking at them, it took me a couple of years to go ahead and buy one because uh, I wasn't sure if I I knew it was going to be a huge learning curve with everything. You know, the hardware is so different, and the software software wouldn't really isn't different for me because these most all commercial servers run will run Linux. Well, they're made to run Linux. They usually run Red Hat or uh, some of the other proprietary, there's proprietary Linux systems. But uh, Fedora is what I run, and that is the uh, basically the testing ground for Red Hat. Uh, Red Hat is uh, commercial version of it and uh i've been running fedora since 2005 and well when the instant i tried it i never wanted I, I kept windows machines around but i never used windows as a daily basis since then and uh so much better not on all that virus problems and everything you still have to nowadays you get to watch out because there are there is malware that can you know get in the linux system you still have to be careful but um it's nothing like Windows or Mac either. You know, people, they help Mac, Mac won't admit it when they have a problem. But, uh, so that's worse than, uh, that's way worse than Windows because Windows would jump and, and, and send out an update, you know, to try to mitigate it. Uh, they were slower years ago than they have been in the last, well, I guess last 10 years. They've really gotten fast at it because it's such a, you know, it's become such a big deal around the world. That, uh, yeah, you you disappoint me, little machine. I I kept thinking not to mess with it until I had extra time. And it kept coming in the back of my head. I'd be just, just just look at it. It might be <laughs> it might be just the thing. It might be. Uh, I still didn't look up. I'm gonna look. I'll, I'll I'm just rambling, so I won't. Uh, I I don't know. I I don't think there's a lot of point in me looking up. I could. <laughs> Where's that number? I really would like to know what that processor is. It doesn't take long to find information on the processors. But I think that uh, my server's running. Let me turn on the TV. I mean the monitor. And I can just look. Well, I have to plug in my USB. <clears throat> That's no big deal. I just got me a long cable with a female end on it, and then when I want, I, I it's the first time I've ever unplugged it since I set it up. But I can do that. I can unplug that, and then I've got my can use that uh, position on my KVM switch for uh, other machines. It doesn't have to be on the server. And of course, the all I was missing was the uh, put that somewhere where it doesn't get broke. 